Hey everybody. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about Docker Compose files. I see a lot of people getting errors when they're trying to launch Compose files and mainly the reason is they don't really understand what's going on. So I'm going to come over to my apps and there's two ways to do Docker Compose on TrueNOS. So the one I'm going to be dealing with today is Dockage, but in the event that you didn't want to do that, you could always do a custom app and we don't want to click the custom app button, we want to install via YAML. So a Docker Compose file is usually a .yml or .yml yaml file, and you just post, paste that here. But I'm not going to be doing that today. We're going to be doing the ones on Dockage, but just know it's the same thing. There's no difference. So let's come over to our Dockage web UI. Let's look at the R stack, because this is pretty straightforward. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to look at it like this. So let's take a basic Docker Compose file for something here. We'll do the qubits one, one later. We'll do one all at the end. <coughs> so Let's start with the first line, which is services. The Docker Compose file is listed of a service, and you can have many services in a single Compose. So in this case, I could have stopped right here and just done Prowler. But instead, I did a whole bunch of ones here in a single stack. But one thing you want to notice is when I do services, I'll come down, and I'll indent to, and then I'll come down, and then I'll indent to, and then I'll come down, and then I'll indent to. Everything is a two-space indentation. So my services can only can only list one service. I can't, I can't have multiple services in a single Compose. But I can have a bunch of... I can have I can have one service line, but I can have many services. So Prowler's a service, Radar's a service, Sonar's a service. So I can have many of those, but only one of these. So let's start with Prowler. This is the service I'm defining. So I have to have a unique container name. So this is my container name here that I'm calling it. But I can't have more than one thing like that, I believe. So here, this is the image. This is where it's pulling from. I'm getting the Linux server one from lscr.io, which is one of the best and most trusted places out there. I'm calling the container name Prowler. The reason I'm doing that is because when I come over here, this might come up as a weird name if I don't list the container name. So it's a good idea for me to do that. And the environment variables. This is where I can pass some values into the container. And most containers are expecting you to pass some kind of value. So for just about all the R stack, uh, I'm going to need to pass the PUID and PGID. You'll notice for TrueNAS, I always keep it as 568, and the reason for that is the data sets permissions I always set to apps. 568 is the number corresponding to the user and group apps. So if your data sets are set to apps, which of course they should be, you're going to need a PUID and a PGID of 568 in order for the permissions to work. Otherwise, when you open things up, you'll get permission denied. The TZ is the time zone. This is completely optional. I just throw it in there so when I read my logs, I know what time things happen. If I have it set to like ETC, UTC for universal time, it might give me a time and say, hey, this happened at like 0300. And I'm like, man, it's 8 o'clock at night. It's, it's hard for me to like figure out what happened when if they do time conversions. So this just helps me read the logs better. Volumes. This is massively important. This is where a lot of people get messed up. Docker is like a mini computer running inside your server. So it's not a full computer. I'm not going to go into the main differences between a VM and Docker, but what I will tell you is Docker has its own hard drive structure. So when you start up a Docker container like Prowler, the only thing in its hard drive are all the files that it needs to make the Prowler app work. There is no other files, and it doesn't have access to the files of the computer that it's running on. So if I'm running Prowler on TrueNAS, and I've got all these cool drives and data stuff here, it, Prowler can't see any of this. This is on a completely separate computer, according to Prowler, according to Docker. Docker silos and sandboxes everything inside tiny little computers, for lack of a better term. That's not completely correct, but if you're a beginner, that's an easy way to understand it. So the volumes are what I want to pass into the hard drive, and it works like this. You see this colon right here? This separates what's on the inside from what's on the outside. So for example, when you come over here, you'll notice in configs, I have a spot for, well, I had a spot for Prowler. Uh, it doesn't here, it exists in here anymore, but long story short. Actually, in this case, that's not the case. So let's start look at this. This little dot right here means within the stacks folder. So when I actually come over here and I come to stacks, this folder here, I will show you, has got some stuff underneath it. All right, so you see where it says R stack? This is the name of the stack I deployed. So when I come over to my dockage, see how it's named R stack? This is where I'm gonna find all the files. So I come in here. Okay, let's look at our configs. Now, the reason I'm looking at configs is because the next root folder is here. 
So when I put this, this little dot, it means, hey, I want to start in the stacks directory. I want to, I don't want to type out mount tank media or mount tank stacks slash whatever. I can just leave the little dot and it'll put it in the stacks folder because this is the way dockage works. This is not the way TrueNAS works. If I want to do this on TrueNAS, I need to spell out the whole path. But because I'm inside dockage, I could just put the little dot right here. So within configs, I'm looking for the Prowler folder. So you'll see here that there's a configs folder. So let's go there. And there's all the ones of the R stack. So I'm looking for Prowler. There we go. And that's everything inside the configs folder. Now, the reason that works is because I said, hey, on TrueNAS, or in my stacks folder, which is the left, this is the outside. The inside, I want to map that to the slash config container. What does that mean? That means, like, remember, because Dockage is like its own computer with its own hard drive, uh, uh, something that's not inside, I want to pass to the inside. So this directory here exists outside the container, but I want it to exist inside the container. I don't want to have to copy it. I just want the container to read it on the computer that's running on. So that's what the volume mount does. It says, hey, this is a directory for the computer that Docker is running on. This is the way I want it to appear inside the container. So if I were to start my R stack and go to slash config, you'll see everything in this folder here, which is right here. All this stuff exists inside the container and on TrueNOS. And I want it to be that way because God forbid I delete the container. And if I ever want to rebuild it again, I don't want to have to set up the whole thing all over again. So I can just point it by pointing it, I mean set up a volume mount to this directory and then pass it to the config directory inside. So when I start up Prowler, it's going to be like nothing ever happened. This is why we use host path on TrueNAS, because the host path allows us to save all the configuration and setup files that we made. By saving them on TrueNAS, I get backups, I get, um, I, can, I can mirror it in a RAID, I can have snapshots, all these cool things that protect the data so I never lose it, so I never have to rebuild it all over again. So that's how the volume out works. You'll learn this line. I did something really cool. I used a variable. This is basically saying this little dollar sign in this bracket means I don't want to define this here. Over here, you'll see. Let me edit this. Hold on. There we go. Over here, you'll see I have a dot env. It says media path equals, and then this is the path on Trunos. The way this works is, because I have so many different spots here, instead of me having to type, copy and paste the same thing over and over again for all these media path, media path, media path, I, and especially if I have to change the media path, if I change the data set or if I change something, I don't have to go in here and adjust this 10 different spaces. I can just put this media path variable in one place and then define it in my .env all the way at the bottom down here, and it'll automatically copy it to all the places this exists. So this is the way I pass my media in. I need the inside of the container at the slash media point to see everything outside the container at, in my case, what I have set up, mount tank media. And that is what exists over here. There. So everything that's in this media folder, which for most people is going to be quite a lot, needs to be passed to the inside of the container so it can actually work with the media files. And that's how I do it. Outside the container, inside the container. You'll notice that there's no capitalization here. We do not use capitalization in Docker Compose. In fact, we don't use capitalization in Linux at all unless you absolutely need to, and you pretty much never need to. All right, let's look at the ports. Remember, like I said, Docker is like a mini computer. So it has its own networking besides having its own hard drive. So the networking works like this, same thing. Colon is out, separates inside from outside. So 7878 is the port that I need on the TrueNAS box to be open. 7878 on the right is the port on the inside. So this is basically just sending traffic from one place to another. I don't have to have these numbers be the same on both sides, but the one I don't want to touch is the one on the right. This container is pre-configured from Linux server to be listening on 7878. Now, it doesn't matter what the outside port is. That's just how I reference it. But at 7878 can't change. If I change this to like 7879, I'm going to break it because it's trying, to, it's waiting for traffic. It's waiting for you to talk to it on 7878. So if I change this and say, hey, I want to pass this to a different port, it's not listening on that port. It's not expecting you to give it traffic on that port. So we don't want to change the ports on the right almost ever. The one on the left is completely optional. Now, I kept it 7878 for documentation purposes because if I ever go and look at the documentation for Prowler, for example, or for Radar, I'm looking at Radar right now, uh, for Radar, for example, um, it's going to list 7878. So if I change this because I'm using it somewhere else, I just remember where it is. So it's less work not to change it. It's just easier to leave it the way it is. But in the event that, like, for example, Qubit uses 8080, let's come down here. 
8080 is used by so many things. Man, Nextcloud uses 8080 qubit. There's so many things that use 8080. So this is probably the first one I'm going to have to change. I don't want to change the one on the right, but I could change the one on the left if possible, if I need to. This is the one on TrueNOS. So for example, when I go to my docket system up here, you see all these over here. Let's go up, let's go up, let's go up. Uh, all these other Docker Compose stacks I have right here, all these can be running on different ports, but internally be running on the same ports. And Nextcloud is, again, a great example. Yes, I do want to leave. Nextcloud used to run on 8080, but I changed it to 8887. The reason for that is 8080 is taken by Qubit. So, again, there's all kinds of things that I have this problem with, but on the outside, I can't ever duplicate the port. So whatever's running in the R stack all on the left side, all have to be different numbers. All these ports have to be different. Um, Blue Blogger, Nextcloud, Speedtest, Umami, Unpacker, all these things have to have external ports that are different. If they don't change, you're going to get an error when you try to deploy this container. Finally, you're going to see a restart policy here. This is restart unless stopped. This is always what I leave it as. There's a couple options here. You can do unless stopped. You can do always. Uh, there's some more options, but I always do unless stop, which basically means unless I click the stop button, in dockage to stop a container that's running i don't ever want it to stop i want it to try and restart if there's an error for example so when you guys are doing docker compose files just know it's the basic setup i'm going to scroll down to qubit to show you guys some other things here you'll see there's a lot more environment variables variables inside qubit but it's basically the same thing we have a container name we have the image we have the restart policy we have ports outside inside and we have a whole bunch of environment variables and the reason for that is we just want to pass these these numbers into true into the qubit uh, docker application Doc, uh, this requires a few other special things like capabilities system controls but don't worry about those you don't really ever want to have to change those and we have of course their basic volume mounts and it's the same volume mounts in this folder configs qubit on the outside on the inside that's just going to the config folder and i want to pass all the media on trueness to the media on the inside that's basically it. It's not super complicated. The hardest part is usually environment variables because these are always defined by the container. So for example, I don't get to choose what I put in here. Whoever built Qubit, in this case, this is the Hodio container, he's already set up to expect certain variables and to expect certain values. So I'd have to go to his documentation and say, hey, what are you expecting for VPN underscore comp, for example? I can't just put anything in here and I can't change this unless I know exactly what I'm changing it to. And the only way I know that is to read his documentation. I can't just go and start putting anything I want in Hainer. For example, if I wanted to know what was going on with all these environment variables in Qubit, I would just go to Hodio's site, which is right here, and I go all the way to the bottom and I look at the compose file. See all these little pluses? This is all the explanations of all these things. So for example, VGPN underscore the conf, it says read this. I click this little button and it tells me exactly what I need to do for that. So if I wanted to change the VPN LAN network, which a lot trips a lot of people up, this is everybody that's, oh, I can't reach the web GUI. This tells you exactly how to set it so you can reach the web GUI. So this is all the documentation I'm gonna need to learn about how to change each one of these things. So that's, that's a really good kind of primer on basic Docker Compose.